Greetings, fellow privateer farmers. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer. Episode 10, Breadbasket. Unfortunately, the, uh, the atlas that I just picked up is a slow honker. So trying to get away from stuff is a little bit trickier because it's uh, so slow. I have repaired it up enough. Oh, they just had center scan, sensor scan for me. I have repaired it enough that if I have to um, transverse jump out, I can do that without risking blowing it up. So let's just go through the rest of these ships. There's no ships here that I would want to use story points on because they're all small. That's nice though. Some topography. And I have a hostile too close to me. So let's just jump. Oh, it was a pirate. That's super weird. So that's... Oh, it's a pirate because of... Um, uh, they wanted to intercept me for the mission I just did. All right, so there's a weapons cache somewhere in Thrail. And we'll head towards Thrail. Oh, the other thing is I have to be very cognizant of the fuel that I have for the return trip back to the core. Um, because now that I have the Atlas Freighter and the mule, my fuel... Uh, you know, fuel use has gone up a lot. Meaning that I'm just willingly going to get storm stomped so that I get a little bit of a speed boost. Because I'm worried about running out of fuel in deep space more than running out of supplies. And I don't know who just entered there, but that looked like a big fleet. No, apparently it's not a hostile big fleet. That's good. Oh, a Tundra World. So Tundra Worlds are also, um, uh, can be pretty good colonies. They're, they're usually pretty habitable. And we are here for a weapons cache, which is located inside an asteroid belt. Unfortunately, this whole system is one giant asteroid belt, so that might be a little... I think I just found it, actually. Well, I already have... Oh, oops. Well, there's a lot of, um, materials to be salvaged here. I have three expanded missile racks. I need to learn that ASAP, because it just it's going to keep giving me this it over and over and over again until I get rid of it. Or until I learn it, rather. So, there. Learned. This is not the equipment's cache. Uh, and the raffle timer has, what, 40 seconds left? So somewhere in this, um, asteroid belt is, uh, the weapons cache, and I need to find it in the next 37 days. Oh, I think it might just be up ahead. Is it this? There it is. Paladin point defense system. Blah. Grav beams, awesome. Salamander SRM. Uh, Annihilate rocket part. Harpoons, nice. Dragonfire torpedo. Plasma cannon. Heavy blaster. Thunder wings. And perdition wing. Nice blueprints. So the ones I can learn, I will learn. And I'll sell the rest of the pirates. So the Atlas, what is your name now? Uh, I already have a Jungian, so I'm going to re-roll this. I already have a Wishbringer. Nick the Good. And then the smuggler mule is Max. Nice. So before I return home, I just want to fully explore this area, especially surveying that tundra, because it could be nice.
another weapons cache with a lieutenant in it named Thor. With a Ziffo swing blueprint that I didn't know. What does the A stand for? Uh, we are Agro Assembly. That is our faction name. So this is a widespread ruin, poor farmland, rare ore, so it's not good to farm here. Common organics, cold, so we need a, a fusion lamp, but habitable. Nah, it's not a good world to settle. Can't all be. So is, all right, I do have enough fuel to make it the way back home. That's good. Uh. Steady? Level five, we'll keep them. So let's see, combat endurance, point defense, system expertise, gunnery, and polarized armor. They're not terrible skills. So, um, you're a JD. And given that you're level five, I'm gonna put you in the, put you in a seat of something. Here, I'll just auto side at this point. I have so many officers. I have more officers than I have boats, I have ships. But having um, a ton of officers is really going to make the few good ships that I have even more combat effective when it's time to fight things. So that will really come in handy soon. So now my current priority is to install the or move stuff to the colony and install the nanites. And then once I do that, I'm gonna have you guys vote on what I do after that. So I'm headed over to Corvus um, to pick up as much stuff as I can fit to bring it over to the colony, except for maybe the cores. I think I'm gonna leave the cores behind. No, maybe I'll even take the cores. Maybe I'll try to take everything. Because if, if I don't care about keeping the beta and gamma cores, I might as well just sell them to someone. I sell them to the pirates. Because I, I, I don't... They're not worth anything to me. Have I seen the new version of the cybernetic aug augmentation skill? I have, yeah. The uh, max number of elite skill for officers and then the damage dealt for each elite skill that I have. And um, the flagship gets better. It's something I might work towards once I get the removal of demods. After I get the removal of demods, which I think is the most important for a salvage fleet, uh, I can pull about what other elite skills to work towards, whether it's that or um, or depending on the ships that I have, uh, one of the combat skills. Okay, I'm just I'm just getting storm stomped. That's fine. I'm low on fuel, have a lot of supplies, so... Speed me up. Okay, the way station is done, and I actually got high burn sensor readings being kicked around by that storm so much. So with the way station done, the accessibility bonus... Oh, let's not freeport anymore. Because freeport lowers our stability so much that uh, it hurts credits. Uh, but we will keep hazard paying. And, and in about 30 days, the spaceport will become a megaport, and that should really help out with um, with uh, accessibility. How close are we to be able to do reverse polarity to? Very close. Like, if I wanted to spend the time to hop from gas giant and ice giant in the core worlds to scan them, I could get reverse polarity, but I, it's not that important for me to do but it will be really nice to have once we have it. Now 
95 fuel to spare. Uh, I might want to bring these drugs over to Don in Hybrasil because they're running a really high deficit and they would pay premium for it. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, there's no way I'm ever going to install a paladin. Well, I'll keep the paladins, but it's it's a horrible use of a large slot, in my opinion. So selling everything I don't need. I'm going to hold on to the transplutonics. And actually, um, I sold these metals, so it's not that I'm buying metals. I'm just like, well, here, I'll, I'll make it look more fair. I'm going to sell some of my metals, but hold on to a whole lot of them so that I can do installations. It's forbidden that I buy anything but crew, fuel, marines, and, and supplies. But I was selling so many metals that it was like, oh, I'll just buy them back. But I know it looks wrong, so I'll do it right. That's a pretty penny that we're uh, walking away with. I'm in open market. I'm doing it intentionally. I'm in an open pirate market. It's not against the rules to trade on open pirate markets. Just any other open market is, is illegal. Open trade with pirates or my own systems are fine. I mean, we fancy ourselves... Pi oh, my transponder was off. They're going to be pissing and moaning about that, aren't they? Wah, transponder. It's like, I don't care, guy. Yeah, I was smuggling. What are you going to do about it? Find my drugs. Uh, you know what? They, they took my drug. Oh, no, they didn't take my drugs away. They just got pissed. Let's uh, race to dawn. So what I did there is like, I refused to give them up, which uh, pissed off the hegemony uh, a good bit. But uh, they weren't willing to engage me. So they were essentially reporting me to the authorities, wagging a finger, because I wasn't willing to give up the drugs. Um, and the reason why they found them is I don't have enough shielded cargo to block them from finding them, because they're I have so many drugs and you know, they're you can find them out. What are you doing here? Where is Don? Is it near this nascent gravity well? I'll hop in here. Yeah, it is perfect. So, trade, open market drugs. And now there's nothing to scan or find. No. So with that offloaded, we're not going to run the risk of um, uh, being scanned again like that and having to suffer consequences. So I'm going to try to buy as much black market fuel as I can and then... Um, uh, bring as m bring everything that I own down to uh, Agroville, which is five days away from getting a nice big boost. So I need to install the nanites, and then I should also try to set up a um, a stability point, makeshift stability. Oh, that's a really ruined condor. I'd rather have you a scrap. Ooh, that's really ruined too. Now I'm starting to consider like the cost benefit of taking on like super ruined ships because it takes like four D mods would take like at least four months to clear. And if it's not a high value ship, it's not worth the time it would take to make it repaired up, which is why I'm ignoring them.
Megaport is done. So, the benefit. Megaport is adding uh, pop growth and accessibility, so my accessibility is quite high. Very, very high with the fullerene spool. Um, so if I wanted more stability, because it would be good if I could free port. Because what's happening right now is the population that I have on this planet demands drugs. And there's no way to import those drugs unless I free port, opening it up for drug import. Um, so I am going to install... Maybe a low-tech... I'll do midline. Maybe a midline orbital station. And a patrol H. Yeah, I can't quite afford... I mean, I could afford the patrol HQ, but it would nearly bankrupt me, so I don't think it's worth it just yet. So what's my rep with the pirates? Negative 17? Oh, we're very close to zero. A little bit more missions on them and we'll be truly neutral. So here's the thing. I probably don't have the crew to actually move on everyone. Uh, unless I mothball. <laughs> Cause this is not a small fleet at all. Um, so what I could try to do is head over to the pirate base and like uh, hire as many people as I can but I need a crew of 1525 to be able to move this amount of ships and then also like the amount of supplies it takes to even um, so I'm going to suspend all repairs so uh Oh, except for some of the ships are dangerously low. So I'm going to resume repairs of the of the the dangerously just uh, damaged ships so they don't implode on me. So yeah, this is risky, but it's going to save me time. Also, uh, may it be known, I just made monthly income. I just made money um, this month from the uh, from the proceeds of of. Proto piracy. Okay, let's not smash things. So I'm getting kind of close to the crew crew necessary, and I'm also gonna uh, sell the the cores. I probably should not have sold them on the on the black market. They're not gonna be happy about that, but eh, damage is done. It's too late. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go up to Jangala and try to buy crew, black market crew and fuel. So yeah, what I'm doing is risky, but it's 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 to cut corners. I mean, it is cutting corners. And my transponder was off because I'm an idiot. Wow, they swarm me pretty good. I'm very, oh, I'm over the crew need. So let's not hire them all. I'll just hire just enough to crew it up. So I need, yeah, that, so that's 15 more than I need, which is fine. Okay. I have enough fuel to get there, but not back. But that's fine. Because I'm not coming back with all the ships in my fleet. Also, let's resume repairs of everything. Because I think we have the supplies for it. I hope. 
And I do have a way station set up on Agraville, so if I need to buy new supplies, I, I can. Nice, our Paragon's fully repaired. Uh, what do you guys want me to do next? Now that we're uh, finally managing to quote unquote move in. Oh, reverse polarity would be really nice right now. I'm going to e-burn it. Uh, so the other big thing now is um, we can... Uh, make some major changes to the ships. Like augmented fuel drive, because I'm at my own ports. So an augmented fuel drive and a uh, militarized subsystem uh, makes this atlas move at... Uh, I don't even know, but faster than eight. And uh, that allows us, if I do that to all of the big honking ships that are super slow, uh, that allows us to use the big honking ships that would normally be super slow and have them not be super slow. So this has been, oh wow, I can't even do s military subsystems because there's not enough, there's not enough points. Uh, I would need to build it in, which I um, would possibly consider um, at some point. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to store all of the ships and then it depends on what you vote on for me to do next, I, I guess, but I'm going to store all of the ships and then just take the ships that I think are going to be uh, the ones that that follow me around regularly. Uh, so let's strip a. Uh, uh, I'm going to strip some weapons off this uh, Prometheus so that I have the ability to do uh, militarized um, subsystems. So the militarized subsystems negates the penalties of a civilian hull, but it does increase the minimum crew. Uh, and the civilian hull uh, will, um, in the case of this, increases the sensor profile and reduces the sensor strength, which is like not great when you're trying to like smuggle or whatever. And then on some ships, it will also uh, just physically slow down the ship, too, uh, reducing burn speed. So now with these two ships, uh, we're all moving at nine because I've I've rigged them up, I've super modded them so that they're they're faster. Uh, so I think um, the civilian ship would be a good one to travel around with regularly as well, and we need to get that one faster too. So the, um, the military subsystems increases burn level, uh, which is probably actually not necessary on the civilian um, ship. So I might do berthing instead to store more crew here. So if I look at my fleet, we're all nines, movement speed nines across the board. I did notice um, the benefit of, of, of built-in so, like, for the fuel ship, doing, you know, the uh, built-in fuel storage and then doing cargo ship, built-in cargo storage. It's probably not how I want to spend the, the, the um, story points just yet. But I definitely could consider it in the future. So, we're going to do some survey and salvage. Got it. So, I'm going to put together a survey fleet. And then also, before I forget, get the... Um, the stable point building done and uh, 
and then do some refitting so that the ships that we have running with us are as good as possible. So colony info, farming, install, nanites. So what this is doing is this farm is producing five units of food. Uh, given the rich farmland, it normally would be four if it was adequate. And I can nanite it, and now it's providing seven. So it's even more productive, which is really nice. Um, yep. I can also repair at the shipyard because it's my shipyard. So, and then here's the benefit of the way station. I can resupply now much, much, much more easily, which is going to be good for refueling. I'm going to keep the alpha core on me in shielded storage so that it can't be taken from me by, um, inspectors or anything like that. And because I'm just, um, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Hold on. Abort. Because I'm just heading out to install the, uh, the stability beacon. I don't really need the other ships. So I have metal, transplutonics, and heavy machinery. I think those are the three things I need. And that's it. How many story points do I have? I have five. So the other thing that you can do with story points is you can invest them in your colonies as well. And it's uh, exponential cost. So it's like two, then four, then eight or whatever. Goes up pretty high. But if there's specific things that you want that for your colonies to do real well, um, that's that's one that you can do. So here we go. I have a makeshift comm relay here now. I don't know why I would need a comm sniffer on my own comms relay, but that increases the stability in the system by one, which is good, very nice for um, for productivity. Also, Agraville, use stockpiles during shortages. So if I'm ever short anything, one of the things that I could do is if it's ever short drugs, I could import drugs myself to Agraville and they can draw down the stockpile that I manually import for its colony needs. So let's put together a survey fleet. So I'll go with the giant fuel ship um, this freighter is pretty demodded. I don't think it's going to be worth bringing. I might just bring what I have on me now. Just bare minimum. Just me. I don't even need my own ship, honestly. I could ditch my own ship and sit in, like, the cargo ship. I'm okay with that. The other, the other thing that I could consider is, um... Uh, installing sensor packages on here. Uh, but I think that's a dock thing, right? Uh, survey equipment. So survey equipment reduces the heavy machinery and supplies required to survey. Depending on hull size, and because these are massive ships, it would be kind of significant. Um, but I would need to ditch military subsystems in order to be afford that. So the other alternative is I could ditch subs uh, the the militarized subsystems and then um, bring the tug and make sure the tug is fast if we really want to like min-max survey so tug I could sit in the tug that's funny using a tug like if I if anyone wants to fight me I'm dead so there is a bit of a risk doing this kind of survey, but it is it's, it's it will allow me to run my fleet at like m minimum cost. Uh, so I don't think. Oh yeah, I'd have to build in the augmented drive field. So no, this doesn't really work. Uh, is there any other ship that would make sense? Oh, you know what? I could take Boba Bashug too. 
because it's it's a it's um it's a cargo ship that can be refitted for one more speed and then um and then given uh additional cargo oh yeah yeah i do have cargo holds So we move it eight speed instead of nine. It's fine. Or the pirate mule. Actually, you're right. Given that I am, um, I have the alpha core on me. The pirate mule makes way more sense. So thank you for pointing that out. Foolish of me to to, to not go that route because I'll have a lot of shielded cargo. Plus, this thing can. I mean, it can't really defend against much, but it's not defenseless uh, I don't have a good weapon for it though like a thumper I think thumpers actually got a bit of a bonus this last patch I'll just put rail guns in um, ideally with uh, expand oh I yeah expand the cargo and Integrated targeting. It's definitely a junker, but you know, it's my junker. It's not made for combat, really. Okay. So crew under strength. Let's pick up some crew. Put those weapons away. So we need a crew of at least 155. Let's go a little bit above because we're going to want to... Uh, let's go maxing out. Actually, <clears throat> there's one other thing that I should bring. If we're trying to survey planets, I need crew to survey planets. So I'm going to need to bring a civilian ship of some sort so that we actually have the crew to do surveys. So I'm going to bring DSN Matter uh, along with me as well. That's going to be expensive, but I'm going to refuel here. I'm going to resupply here. And bring... Let's go with 600 crew. Most planets are going to be surveyable with 500 or fewer. So 600 is plenty. Okay, so we have our survey fleet. As you can see, I can go anywhere in the galaxy and back with the range that I have. Um, and we'll start going maybe northwest to do Manuela. Do I have enough heavy machinery? Yeah, definitely. What? There's people waiting for me on the other side of my jump point? Damn, yo! You guys are aggressive. It's probably honestly just like pirates that wouldn't fight me. How do you assign the Alpha Core to the shielded cargo? Uh, you can't, but by default, anything that is illegal gets priority in the shielded cargo over anything else. So you don't have to do anything. So it's like, if my shielded cargo, for instance, can hold 325 units of stuff. So if I have 326 units of stuff, they will find that 326 unit and confiscate it. But the other 325 will be protected. Um, so that's the way it works. So if you have an enormous amount of illicit stuff like drugs or organs, um, you have to avoid scans. But as long as you're not smuggling massive, ouch, mass amounts of stuff, uh, you're probably fine. Well, this is a boring planet. Prove me wrong, planet. Probe right there. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get through those automated defenses with the nothing that I have. So that probe will go unanalyzed. That's the other issue of going like super economy for survey is I can't fight anything. Like everything would kill me. But it does make it affordable to, uh, to survey cheap.
Oh, we've got Marines. Out of a, it was a, a phase troop transport. And another probe. Which is defended. Note to self, come back here later. And kill the probe defenders. Like, had I left base with the Manticore and, like, an Eradicator, I could easily take those defenders out. I just didn't. So, I have been in Alpha Manuela. I don't really need to go there. There's two blue giants here that might have a Hyper Shunts, and if they do, they're within 10 light years of my colony. Not that I can defeat the Hyper Shunt defenders, but it's worth investigating. Oh, come on, I didn't get credit for the Magfield? Game, please, I was right there. There's not a lot of, um, it's not very forgiving. You have to actually be physically within the field to benefit from the scan, where you have to be in the mag field for the topography data. So I was like, I don't know, a, a kilometer away? I mean, not literally, but. Doesn't look like this, um, it doesn't look like there's much of interest here. But the monthly income being 12k, that's money. Thank you, Nanite Farmers. And any planet that has ruins on it, I will survey. Or any planet that looks habitable, I will survey. An unguarded probe. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, there's something in the corona. Or near the corona. Another probe. Defended. There's something in orbit around this next planet. Hope it's not pirates. Another probe. And defended. Man, I really should have... I didn't... Yeah, I could have done that better. Is all I'm going to say. I could have had the bare minimum to at least defend, to at least kill those like silly little probes. A uh, question for you guys is, should I turn back and take a few combat ships to defeat probe defenders? Because I am missing out on potentially, I mean, the typical probe doesn't have like a crazy high value loot pool, but I'm definitely missing out on some loot pool. Um, ooh, there's a survey ship here too. And then, um, I'm also missing out on, like, combat experience as, uh, as a result of not being able to uh, defeat the uh, defenders. And this service ship is almost certainly defended. Yeah, it is. So the service ships are spicier targets than the probes. They definitely have some nicer things in their loot pool, generally. And they can even have information about motherships. So probes are small. You have service ships, so they're larger, and the motherships are, like, the mother load of domain, pre-domain era loot pool. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 3rd and February 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that this is a series from a marathon stream, meaning that changes cannot be made to the series. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Radamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video or also at Radamont.com. 
Additionally, in the description of this video is a link to the details about this series, if you're wondering about the scenario series rules or goals. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow privateers.